right. We are rolling. Hi, this is Stephen Sloan. The date is October 28, 2015. This is a uh, interview with Gilbert to Habanye, and we're at Luke's Locker in Austin, Texas. This is an interview with the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission's Survivors of Genocide Project. Thank you, Gilbert, uh, for making time for us today. Uh, I'd, I'd like to start, I know you've told your story before, um, but several times, as we said, but I would like to start if you could give us kind of an understanding of your early life there in Fuku and um, what it was like growing up in your village and just a picture of what that was like. First of all, thank you for allowing me to be with you this morning, to be able to testify, to show and to tell the world what happened. But um, I'm very happy because today, this week, marks uh, 23 years since 2000, 23, 2000, 1993 up to today, 22 years. And um, growing up, I was a happy child. I am uh, uh, a third out of the fourth, and I was, I, I was also third in the family. And growing up, I had a two what, older brother, Diodone, and uh, old sister, and I have a young sister. So growing up, um, my life was fun. Uh, my daily routine would be getting up in the morning, go fetch water. We didn't have water and electricity in the house. I would go fetch the water and then I would go to school. Um, and school was six miles away and I would walk from school to home. Um, and on the day, at the end of the day, you know, no water, no, I was dehydrated, but still, once I get home from school, I will go, uh, I call it guide the cows or chase the cows. We had a lot of cows mm -hmm. and we had a big mountains that uh, really we let the cows graze and at the end of the day, you just have to go bring them home. And um, at the end of the evening, some of the stuff that really stuck with me was my grandma who was my inspirational um, she was kind of, to me, was my dictionary. Learn all the history from her. Because it's not like here in the United States where you have access to books. We learn stories uh, from my grandma. And beside the stories, there was, um, she would have us sing. And most of the songs were coming from uh, going to church. She didn't know how to read and write. But she memorized all the songs. And one of her favorites was, let's sing on 100. We didn't know what 100. I was not even part of the church. But it's, let's sing on 100, which was, I love her voice. I love to sing that song because it stayed in my, me. Mm -hmm. She passed away. She died. But her voice, the melody, the beautiful words, it stuck with me. So that was my... Uh, what I remember being growing up in Mountain Fuku. Mm. So uh, the herd that you were tending to was it your family's herd? Yes, it was. Uh, it was my my family, my mom and dad, and also in a whole family. My grandparents, Pauline, who was a grandpa, uh, was her name, because my grandpa passed away before I was born, and so we had cows from my cousins. Uh, all my um, brothers, my uncles, or what I mean, all my uncles uh, will be will be guiding the cars together, and we alternate. So let's say my kids will have a day, my uncle will have a day. We will rotate. So uh, it will, we have a closer to 80, 80, 80 cars total. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. That was big, and that was also probably the richest in the whole village. Mm -hmm. So in a fairly small village. How big was your village? My village is, I won't say it was big. It, it, was, a, it was a mountain. That was my family. Uh, with, we were like closer to 20, 25 grand, grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And then to our neighbor, there was another family. Um, it was a really small, really small. Mm -hmm. We didn't even have roads for a while that leads up to the major, major roads. Um, and uh, yeah. So very rural, very remote. 
very remote. Yeah. It would take from it. That's why the school was six miles away. Uh -huh. The next market was six miles away. The next hospital was six miles away. I mean, to get to the paved road, I would have to walk two hours to get to the paved road. Mm -hmm. So to get to the city, it was really isolated. I don't know how I made it here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know a little bit about you, and you probably ran part of the time too. I did. Yeah. I have a nickname called Tumagu, and that name was given because every time I would go get the water, fetch water, oh, I was I was the favorite son for my grandma, grandma because she loved, because every time she wanted something, I would run, I would come back quick. And, um, and that reminds me also, when I was, she started calling me Tumagu, which means back in the days when, um, Probably when I was born, there was a lot of thieves that would come to steal a car. And so people, they would stay at night to guide the cars. And to stay awake, they would smoke. Smoking was a sign of they are awake. Do not try to mess, mess with them. And so when I was born, they, start, they called me to Magu because I was really calm. Kids who didn't sleep were like, oh, Tumbu to Magu is awake. And then, and then when I would go get the water, it, it's a dusty everywhere, especially in the summer. And we enjoy you know, making dust so you can see dust in the air. And I'd be running and I was like, here he goes. Here's a Tumagu. Really, um, it, was, it was fun. It was fun growing up. Because I didn't have anything to worry. All I worry was school, um, taking care of the families, help them get, uh, you know, fetch water, um, get um, like to make woods, woods, dry woods to make fire. Uh, or there was also uh, for the cows. Sometimes they needed to refresh their um, what do you call it, the barn. Mm -hmm. So we get grass, so we go cut the grass and put it at the top of the head and take and spray so it kind of make it fresh. But at the end of the month, at the end of the month, another thing we do, we do to take it out the, um, um, the compost. And that way the compost will serve as fertilizer. Fertilizer, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm interested in you talking about your grandmother telling stories. Were there some favorite stories that you had of hers that she told? There was a numerous stories, you know, but what I remember was um, um, there was a teasing, I forgot what they call this game here. There we go, Sokwe, which means, uh, I've never seen, i never heard of this game. It's like Sokwe, Niruzi. It's like I'm about to start a question. You know, it's like, hey, hey, uh, I'm about to start a question. And then we throw a question to see who we answer. So quick, so quick. And some kind of parables are used. Mm. And that was a kind of a game to uh, keep up the story, keep up what's going on in the country. Um, she told us the story about um, how they colonized the, uh, the country. She told us also the story how they killed the, the hero for independence, where she was. She told us the story, um, you know, during independence, what was she doing? Uh, the name we, we I learned in the school later on, uh, but you know, it's like being a head. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you had heard it at home before you heard it mm -hmm. at school. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear a different version at home than you heard at school? There was always exaggeration at home, mm -hmm. because you know what? It's passed on by. Just by talking, it's not reading anywhere. They could, she couldn't read or write. The, the way they interpret a uh, um, few things. And uh, yeah. Now, <clears throat> did you like school? Were you a good student? Um, I think, let me see. Yes, I loved school. I loved school. And uh, there was my brother who was pretty smart and brilliant. And my brother was smart, so I have to keep up with him. And then. Um, Let me see where I, I screwed up a little bit. I think I was a good student. One, of the, I didn't like I did like running because it was too much, man. I mean, I ran from home six miles, and I get to school, no water. I was dehydrated, and you get to school, they ask, I, I'll fake anything to, to skip the sports at the school. Like when you have a flu, there was in a hospital, and every time they said to go do run, I would say, no, I gotta go to the hospital, my flu. 
because you know what it was too much mm -hmm. um, when I think about these days um, yeah that's the only thing I didn't like because it was too much to go get the water and I would fake it mm -hmm. so I don't but a student wise I think I was a good student I respect everyone I was uh, always a good team player we play a game because it's six months from school we mm -hmm. play a game to know one another and um, I remember um, one time we tried to, you know, we go through cones and uh, land full of like a vegetation, you know, corn, uh, corn, sorghum, peas, uh, bananas. Sometimes you run and there's a tons of bananas uh, ripe and you're hungry, you're like, get that, and, you know. And then there's also, uh, we go through a forest and the forest was um, full of some of the, um, there's some fruits. I, don't, I haven't seen these trees in the United States. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of big and produces yellow fruits. That is, when they're not, they're kind of uh, sour when they're ripe. One way they're ripe, they are kind of sweet. The monkey loves to do those. So once in a while we will go and we we'll find a monkey around it and then you have to do something to fight the monkey. So uh, it's something you can't do by yourself. You have to do it with the people. And, and so, um, and I remember one time this guy was like, you know, kids, do ever touch my land. We we're trying to eat the, um, uh, what do you call it? The cones to get the sugar out of the cones, you know, you know, the, um, the sugar cane? Yeah, yeah. No, not the sugar cane. Yeah. The corn's also the sugar, the, the sweet. Not this corn here. I see. Okay. Yeah. We knew how to tell this corn that is sweet or not sweet. Mm -hmm. Usually, you don't have that kind of corn. So we one time we decided, let's go, let's go get, you know, it's kind of like a sugar cane, but made out of corn. And the guy was hiding. He was hiding in, in, uh, in the corns, and he told us, I mean, come in and cut some of my friends and we were turning in and we were brought to you know we went to the headmaster we were punished so bad for doing that you know what the punishment was they send you home and the next day you come with your parents that's not cool that's mm. not a cool when your parents are coming to school with you, you get spanked in front of it's uh, embarrassing i mean the worst thing so those kind of things mm -hmm. so you get disciplined in school and disciplined at home usually at the school yes both yeah, yeah. both yeah so it's like either they spank you home and it's like when I get to school I won't spank you but they get to school is more like what you told them you lied to me again <laughs> it was incredible yeah um, the headmaster also was really co co connected to my parents so I couldn't do anything uh, stupid I would do I was always like you know, it's, it's gonna tell them I mean it's gonna tell them because during holidays or during parties and they would get together, how are my students doing? So you can't mess up. Uh, and those are the word at home. Once you go to school, learn, respect one another, respect your teammates, respect your friends, don't do, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you couldn't get away with anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although I know you did get away with some things, right? So what did, what did you do for fun when you had time, uh, other things for fun? For fun, at a school or home? At home. Oh, <laughs> crazy. So home, um, we have a cows. And um, again, guiding the cows, it's a mountain. So, you know here, there's a field everywhere. You play soccer, there's a fields everywhere. There's none of those. So we find a place that is, the grass is not higher. So we, this is our terrain. We're gonna, this is the field, we're gonna play. And we play, we play, we play, and you forget that you're guiding the cows. One day, the cows went to graze or went to somebody's, somebody's um, land, and they damaged the corn, they damaged the, uh, the, so the potato. This is like in the midst of the summer, like um, mm -hmm. uh, early August. You know, the rain hasn't become in, they just planted, um, man. Ooh, that was bad. I will never forget that moment. So I end up, uh, when I get home, so the, this, this family went to my mother. They say, hey, um, look what your son done. Come on, take a look. And all the cows, they don't have proof. They just, it's not like you take a photo look, it's gone. They have to bring 
um, they call uh, Abashing and Tai, which means it's a um, it's a group of wisdom men and women mm -hmm. that make a judgment. That it's a kind of justice, local justice, uh, and so once they call those group of people, you're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. You're in a deep trouble. So I was in trouble because the cows went damage somebody's my neighbor's land. The other piece that I love to do was writing. Um, um, a banana. So that was fun because we lived at the top of the mountain when we have a free time or what our mama said, hey, will you get 20 minutes? You come back here, you're going back to guide the cows. You chop like a banana and then you will, you will take the banana and the sleepers. It's a grass in the summer, it died. Mm -hmm. The summer, will, the, the grass will die. And so when you put something wet, <laughs> so you put it, um, so it's like, a, it's like a trunk, and then you, you put, um, it's like you, it's a trunk, this is a trunk. Then you take a stick up to here, right? So you put your leg here, and you put a leg here. That would be to push. <laughs> it, is, it was amazing, it would yeah. go fast. Over and over, the shots will get, hot. It would, we end up with the hole in the back, hole in the back. and uh -huh. uh, I, I got in trouble too because mm -hmm. the shorts was like, what happened? What happened in shorts? And they knew what you've been doing. But it was so much fun. You can't quit. <laughs> the thing about it, like kids here in the United States, where there's a snow, you take a box, is you know, box is right, and you know, on the ice, something like that. But it was mm -hmm. fun. Um, what else? Soccer. We also had a game. Um, we play around the water, which was kick the lion. But because we didn't know English, it was neat. We say, kick the lion. I mean, who, who's, uh, who's the scale of the lion? Kick uh, the, li the, the lion. And, and everybody would say, nobody. So who's the scale of the lion? Nobody. So you have this creek. Someone would call out from the other creek. So the goal was, it's coming to attack you. When it coming to attack you, you keep getting away. So you have uh, 10 people, five people, and so you get cut first, you help him cut the second person, mm -hmm. you have to cut the person. Uh, and when you have a last person left, you have to jump 10 times and you win, which was in, impossible. Mm -hmm. Go one, two, three. And this is a big, uh, big like this and there's a water you go down you can't come back <laughs> it was it was rather fun i i mean it was incredible <laughs> another thing hide, hide and seek yeah. too we did hide and seek uh, yeah. uh, and that was you're talking about hide and seek when i see my kids play hide and seek i'm like hide and seek this is not in the house man you're talking about grasses that are big out here and you say close your eyes and they, even if you watch them go, there's no way you're gonna find them. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, incredible. You can stay hidden for hours. For hours yeah. until he said, I won. You can say, okay, come out. <laughs> I won. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was fun. Um, I also know uh, you and your father uh, did hunting, or you did hunting Oh, with your oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. The hunting was an, a kind of an, in, an incredible, mm -hmm. because every morning, Every morning, like Sundays, it was um, like a hunting day on Saturday. Because on Saturday we didn't have a school. Mm -hmm. And people, um, we lived, again, it's a bunch of mountain and in the, in the valley it's a forest. So you have all these deer, you have all these gazelles, you have all these, uh, some monkeys. And so in the morning, uh, we have a pygmies and the pygmies, love meats they didn't they didn't they like to eat meats and they didn't have a lot of land to cultivate and to get the crops so they they substitute to getting protein by meat eating hunting mm -hmm. so the animal will get away and we will hunt the way we hunt it here and and the growing up is totally different we will chase the animals until they get tired and the way when you say the chase the animal until they get tired so they said maybe Baylor, the animal been running from Baylor, 
by the time it gets here, it's, they're tired. Mm -hmm. Everybody, hey, everybody, hey, the dog and the people. So we'll do a circle and then you end up, it's like captured. Mm -hmm. Because there's the mountains, I mean, you can hear echo from that way and you know it's coming. So that was, uh, well, that was one, of the, um, um, one of the coolest things. And I remember um, my grandma was really strict. Once you're done eating, once you kill the animal, she didn't want any, anything to do with meat. She said it was meat that's cast. So you only have to kill it, but don't eat it. Because we still eat chicken, we still eat um, uh, and cows. Mm -hmm. But I ate a, a rabbit heart. I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, some other things that I know were important in your uh, lo early life as well was the church. Yes. Uh, being part of the church. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? So, I, uh, it's kind of a complex. When I was growing up, my, uh, my mom was not, she was one of the best people you ever met. But she didn't believe, she was not part of any church, but she would support us. We went to, the school we went to was a Catholic school. It was an Italian school, um, and, and so it was Catholic, 100% Catholic. I even wanted to be a priest one day. I even remember sixth grade. Can you imagine your sixth grade come to you? Mom, I want to be a nun or I want to be a priest. I'm like, really? Why? Because I want to give my life to Christ. To Christ. And I remember my mama said, no, son, I need grandchildren. I'm like, mama, no. But uh, to be honest with you, I, I wanted to go to a seminary school because a seminary school, kids were... I mean, we were off in terms of life. They had a lived nice life. Mm -hmm. For me, I want to use like tenth grade. I was not fully in, but I, but I wanted to be able to go to the school because it was so good, and the discipline was awesome. The kids were number one in the country, and and so I wanted to go to that experience. However, uh, my grade they didn't uh, allow me to do. Uh, also, because my parents didn't approve. Mm -hmm. They have to approve, so I didn't get a chance to go. Um, what is the other question you asked me? I was asking about the, the church. church. So, yeah. grow up as a Catholic, uh, what I mean is, every morning we have, at least once a week, or twice a week, we had religion class. This is a Catholic school. You have to pray before the Holy Mary, the day before you start a class. And then we have someone who come, and then we go to church, and we will... Um, the whole Catholic things, and so, but in my in my household, only my uh, my brother, my sister, and myself, the young sister, were Catholic. The older sister and my mom, they they didn't believe. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so they end up getting a letter. They end up being Catholic later, and 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 so. My grandma was a Protestant. My. What can I call my wife? Uh, uncle was. Uh, they were both. Catholic. It was a mix of a Catholic and and and, and also Protestant. Mm -hmm. So, but we would go at the grandma's. We, we were. Uh, everybody didn't care. We were singing those songs. She would invite once in a while also to go. But my church was cool. It was awesome. The Catholic church was awesome. You get a chance to see, you know, Muzungu. Do you know what a Muzungu is? No, it's a Muzungu. It's a white person. Because okay. that, you get a chance to see the Italian come to preach. And that was pretty cool. I was, to see them learning your language. It was awesome. And the Protestant, uh, when my grandma was going to, beside the singing, I didn't like the church because you find guys that they interpret the Bible, I mean, um, it was kind of, it was not good. But the Catholic, they read. For some reason, I liked the structure. I liked the uh, I liked the routine. I kind of knew how to pray. Mm -hmm. But the other one is improvised, and, and I was not ready for that. I felt it was not super organized. And I went to church every day. And I'll be honest with you, when I when I look back, what part of it was, yes, I love Jesus, but at the same time, I want to see my friends. You know, <laughs> so, so those were your close friends. Yes, and your friends at church. Yeah, yeah. And that church, and it was also the school, mm -hmm. because the school, the church was nearby the school. Can you imagine going Monday through Sunday, going 
the same place six miles. Mm. So, but the protestants was was a few feet away. Mm. So when you get late and um, that's where we go to go to our grandmas. Mm. So yeah, so when you're talking about church, um, you do things to please your parents. You do things to please your peers, your friends. Um, I did. I loved it. Um, I love to be in the church, the, the song, the melody, uh, kind of part of something bigger than myself. Mm. And uh, it, it was really cool, and especially when I, uh, I got, when I got my communion. Uh, also, when I abatai, when I was old, because I have to select the girobet. I was not a girobet before, I was too habo nyimana. So I have a chance to, to say to habonye. And I mean not to have one Gilbert. I almost called myself Jean Claude. You know why? Why? Jean Claude Van Damme. Jean Claude. <laughs> well, I was going to ask how you picked Gilbert. Gilbert was. Um, it's a. So you're given a chance. You have a family name to have one man, mm -hmm. and unless you were baptized right when you were born, for me, I have to seek for. Um, to get about to baptized when I was older. Mm -hmm. Because your parents are the one that decided if you were born, we're taking you. So I, I seek for the to get baptized, and I seek also to get the communion, and then also um, what do you call it? I even forgot now. Um, confirmation. Confirmation. Yeah. So those so, were all your decisions. Yes. You, yeah. And that was different for some of your friends. Yes, yeah. and because I did it order, I did it once. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how they allow you to do. Mm -hmm. So really, I went to church, uh, but there was not the, the requirement were not fulfilled until I was. You have to wait. You have, you have to be patient, mm -hmm. and your parents have to approve. And it was big because when I did, uh, my parents they were so proud and happy, and they gave me a car, they gave me a land, and this is your land for you step up, uh, and it was incredible. Mm -hmm. So had you read the name Gilbert somewhere? It's a, that's a very unusual choice. Actually, I told you I wanted to be Jean Claude, and yeah. there was so many Jean Claude around it. And I look at Gilbert; there was the only one Gilbert in my village. We, oui, it's not Gilbert; it's Gilbert. Gilbert. Oui, Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. And I look; there was, uh, I think there was Gilbert who was uh, on my mom's side, maybe her cousin far away. Talking about generation, his name is uh, Gilbert, and I want to be Gilbert because I want to be different, and I don't want to be. John, I don't want to be because everybody's John, everybody's John Batista. I just want to be Gilbert, and I'm glad I chose Gil Gilbert or Gilbert. So, um, I know it was influential when your uh, brother graduated, and, yes, and went on to his school, high school, yes, uh, yeah, and that influenced you as far as what you wanted to do, yeah, yes. My uh, uh, my brother was pretty, pretty smart, and uh, they call him, um, he had a nickname. So, in the school, like I think it was the fifth grade or sixth grade, you we have to conjugate the verb in French. You know, I will. But mm -hmm. Use something, give a sentence in the uh, um, future. Uh, I will go to the store. So, he said, I will buy a cow. In the Kirun is different. It's even a different. Jashetere in shape. I would buy. I would buy. I mean, I would buy a goat. You know, you know all the sudden, you know, people are laughing. You know, why in the world do you want to buy a goat? So that was his nickname. So Jashetere in shape. They just called him Kashetere. So that was his nickname. And so he passed and went to one the premier one the um, premier college. It was named Atene in the, in the city. And all my relatives, my uncles, my uh, um, they were in the city. So I'm like, how cool is that? And back then I didn't have a shoe, by the way. I didn't have shoes. And so he came, he went to school. They bought him shoes for training, shoes for church, shoes for class. I'm like, what? Uh, that inspired me. Uh, and so, yeah. <laughs> so you, you had... Uh, and then also, you know what? And also when he come uh, back on vacation, you know, before you pass the sixth grade, which is a national exam, it's called Konkur, you have to pass a test. And that test, 
man, it's really, really selective. Out of maybe 10,000, 1,000 get admitted. So you have to be not lucky. You have to be really smart. And I saw, I saw how he did it. He was not even sure. He was like, okay. Okay. So, but it inspired me. He inspired me to work hard, to follow his footsteps. And then, um, and then the gear he got, the gift that he got, he was the first in the family, the whole family to go to college. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I'm next. I have to. Mm -hmm. And so during the break, he would come out and he was, um, he had all these privilege, man. He was not allowed to fetch water. I was the one fetching mm -hmm. water. He was, they didn't ask him to run. They didn't ask him to go get water. I was the one to get water. I mean, all these privileges. I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it. <laughs> so that really inspired me. So, so that that inspired you to do well on your exams. To to yeah. to to study hard. Yeah. Uh, do well. There's also some luck, because you know when you have a ten thousand, it's a selection. Mm -hmm. They have a spot for a thousand. I don't know. I don't remember then. But it was really really the chance is the slim, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, so I made it. I'm, I'm so happy and that I was able to make it. And I didn't get a chance to go to his school that I wanted because he came home and everybody in my village and the growing up, him, um, the, the elderly, you know, 12. It's, it was a 7 up to 13. We have a baccalaureate. I don't know if you mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. You have the people that are last year. Of high school, we have him and I. I mean, uh, seventh grade, and I wanted to go to that school, but that's not the case. They sent me to Kibimba. And why did they send you to Kibimba? You know, it's a random. I see. It it's a random. Usually, they take probably the first maybe one. So you you put a three score on the application, right? By cho by by. Um, what I can say. Preference? Like preference. You, you preference. Which one? So, yeah, yeah. I want Baylor, Texas, A&M, that order. Mm -hmm. I like that order, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, if you do that, you there's a certain grade. It's like you are a one at the top, you go, you go to your uh, favorite. And then, after that, it just whew, mix it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for some, it can be luck, it can be, you know. Uh, so was uh, Kabimba one of your preferences, not no, your first? Not, oh. e not even my brother. Uh, <laughs> not even, I didn't even know what was the school. The, oh, so you didn't know anyone there? You no. Know, have, okay. And also sometimes it depends on but one province, we have more students than the other, so they have to fill it out. For, because they spread out in, so, in the country, because the government has to take care of them, all of them. Mm -hmm. And so when I was sent to Kibim, I'm like, damn it, what, what, what is this school? What? Um, and, and my mother, I think my parents were able to find, um, there, was a, there was a lady who, a girl, Lucy was her name. She was a lastie of uh, 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 normal. It's called a core normal, which is, um, it was a school that was to, to form teachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, he wasn't, she wasn't a lass. Lucy was her name. And so I remember we went, oh, tell us, what does the school look like? How do you get there? What was... So that leads to leaving home to the school where never been in a bus, right? Besides watching my brother go, never been in a car. You hear this vomiting in a car. You're like, man, I'm going to vomiting until my heart come out. I mean... All these things started triggering me. How am I going to get to Kibimba? And you don't have a map um, to look at it. You just tell it's this way, it's in this province. And yeah, that, that whole summer when I passed the exam, it was like, how am I going to get there? And how old are you at this point? That's like when you finish your fifth, sixth, sixth grade. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're ready to go to seventh grade. Yeah. yeah. Just think about it. Very young. Very young. I won't be able to see my parents. I won't be able to see my family. For three months, you go, you go September, you come back for Christmas. Mm. You have two weeks for Christmas and then you start again. Yeah. Now, I know that when you went, you had an uncle that lived in that area, right? In the city. In the city, yeah. So, let's say, let's say my house is right here. That's the city and I have to come back this way. 
Because there's no way I would go straight here. There's no roads. I see. So the car leads, you go my town to the city the next day. Because you can't make it one day. The roads are not, uh, plus transportation, you know, it's not developed. It's, mm -hmm. So you will wait because the bus they leave in the morning. So you will wait the next day, a huge bus, of like 200 kids. They get those bus from Japan. Japan. Maybe if you take a bus, but you don't have anything in the middle, because mm -hmm. they will be holding and singing. Yeah, and packing people in there, right? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. leaving my village to go to school, I have to stop with my uh, my uncle who was in a city where it, uh, it's called Bujumbura, which is main city. Um, and he was where um, the city was rich. Mm -hmm. He had a he had a he had a, um, a shop full of clothes. He has a, so many. He has built a lot of like a condos, places to rent. Um, he had like a bar. He had a, all kinds of. Like, I mean, getting in the car was full. Of his wow, this is the man that comes. That also inspired me. One day I would get this stuff. One day I would be, how do you get this? And I would listen to everything he says. So, but on the way, on the way to this, to we go to along this plain and there's a river, I mean a lake. I don't know if you ever heard of Lake Tanganyika. Mm -hmm. Man, it was it's 133 kilometers, which is almost 70 miles, almost 80, 80 something miles. The whole 80 miles, I mean, you, you go down and then 60 miles of, like 40 miles of flat, mm -hmm. You coming from mountain, you never experienced the heat wave. You lived in an altitude where it is mine was eight thousand feet. Now I'm by the ocean. It's a hot man. I mean I wanna take I, I was long sleeve in the village and I was like what am I and to get to my uncle, never seen running water, right? Never seen a shower. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. it's like, what am I doing? You know, and it's like another planet. Yeah, yeah. Another planet. Yeah. Was, but um, and then I was able to get to school. I made friends, and uh, on the way uh, to the school, you, we have to go catch a bus. When you catch a bus, I don't know anyone. You just have to. They come in and they scream. They have like uh, they call convoy air, which is a help. Uh, it's um, I don't know what you call it. To someone who has to announce Kibimba, Gitega, they announce where they're going. They started screaming because. You have a bus for 20 people and you have 100 people to go. Well, how do you do that? It's a first come, first serve, but it's also, it's also um, you have to be strong to fight, mm -hmm. to fight for your spot. Same as on a village, I ran to catch the bus. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then I was able to make it with, uh, with one of my cousins. Mm -hmm. so. so, What were your first impressions of Kibimba when you got there? <sighs> That day was late, it was a night time. Mm -hmm. I was nervous that they, they do the hazing, and I was nervous. I was nervous because I didn't know anyone. I, I thought they were going to torture me, and I would hit school. I might have to go back. It turned out I met one of my friends, uh, Rene and John. Um, they invited me to eat mushkak. You know what a mushkak? Mm -hmm. Shish kaba. Mm -hmm. Shish kaba. <laughs> We ate a shish kebab because the dinner has been served and there's no food. Mm -hmm. and then we had to walk one mile. And then we get there, there's some kids who want, uh, they will take your bus, p these pygmies, they will take your bag, just give them money at the end. They walk with you. It, it, it was, I mean, it's like, no, I want to give my bag. You, how about if you take it? Like, you cool. I mean, those guys were one year older than me and we're still friends. Mm -hmm. And so they were older than me. They said, ah, you'd be cool. Just we'll go with us. We get to school, you give them two to three dollars. They were so happy. And they would run again to go get another person. We're, I mean, it's just so. He, Kibimba, I didn't see that much. I was worried about my wear building. I was worried about how I'm going to sleep there. And then the next day, ooh, it was breeze, it's not altitude. But it was not what I expected. Kind of isolated. It was just school, nothing else. Yeah. Uh, one thing we haven't talked about that's going to become very important is the tribal differences in mm -hmm. your country. Mm -hmm. And uh, Twa, Pygmy. Tutsi, 
yeah, with, with to these differences. And so I know it's going to become very important soon, but growing up, how much of how much did you know a difference or how much how much did the difference tribal groups make in your life as far as who you were friends with, who you weren't friends with? You know, I wish I wish I knew growing up it was going to be an issue. If I knew it wasn't going to be an issue, I would take seriously. So growing up in our family, we shared everything. Mm -hmm. I shared everything with Hutu and Tutsi. Mm -hmm. I remember my shoes that my brother that I got. I gave it to. Um, um, I probably wore it twice, and I gave it to these uh, uh, Hutu friends to wear it. See, we we shared everything. Mm -hmm. Shoes, they come clothes. And yeah, you, yes, you knew there was a. They tell you the Hutu, but it didn't make. It didn't. Hit, it was not a big deal. It's a Hutu, your Tutsi. What? Uh, it didn't. It was not a big deal. Um, especially our grandma. Our grandma was very respectful by anyone. Mm -hmm. And then when Eliphaz, who was my uncle, would come home, with, he was a well-known rich man, the guy who has the only car and comes and my my. My father's and my uncle didn't have a car, but he did. And so what respect, uh, everybody would come, it's like a king coming home. And he would come with gift, beer, I mean, it's a piece of cake to feed all the people that he found home. Um, it was not a big deal. Twa, uh, the twa at the beginning, without knowing a lot, I was, um, you know, because they didn't, they didn't have a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, they didn't have clothes, and you, you don't figure it out until you go see where they live. And it was like, ah, uh, because they would stink also, because they didn't, they didn't have a place to, um, a place to, to shower. Mm -hmm. And by the way, later on, probably that's one of the things I did, was to give clean water clothes to homes. Mm -hmm. And so they would stink, and because they stink, as a child, as a kid, you don't know. You're like, what's wrong with that? But it was because they didn't have water uh, or enough clothes. They wear clothes until it's, they didn't have to change clothes. They were the same. They had maybe one clothes. That's that's it. That's for church. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want you, you know your uncle because I, I know a lot of the business owners were Hutus, right? And, and a lot of the traditionally a lot of the business owners and things like that were Hutu, and a lot of those that worked in agriculture or more Tutsi, is that true? Work in the agriculture, uh, um, actually the Tutsi would employ, back then the Tutsi would employ Hutu, Hutu would be the one working and uh, the Tutsi would earn, uh, will, um, not earn, we own land. Own the land and own the cattle. Uh, yeah, own yeah. land, but the, the Hutu would come to guide the cows, cultivate, they didn't believe in the school, they didn't go to school, so they would guide the cows. We had someone regarding the cows while we go to school. Yeah. But in the summer, they go break because we had to take care of the cows. Mm -hmm. And so that was, um, yeah. That was kind of the difference. The difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, tell me a little bit about, um, as you get settled there in Kim, uh, Kibimba, uh, getting to know the other students, getting to know the teachers, what your impressions were about your fellow students and teachers. I, I connect very well with the two students, and um, as I get to Kibimba, um, I, 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 I got along with everybody. And um, I remember it was good in the math. Um, that gave me kind of confidence. And every teacher were great. The teacher were nice. The, friend, the people were nice. And I felt like confident because I knew some of the, uh, some of the upper class and they would protect me at night time when they come to torture us because there was the note do not touch these kids. If you didn't have anybody looking up after you, you've been serious problems. And so the teacher were great. Um, I mean my seventh grade I think was my highlight. <laughs> it was Cause, because um, part was um, I did great in the school and then second, I got along with everyone. My headmaster loved me. And so he was probably one of the highlights, seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the older kids protecting from the hazing. For the called. hazing yeah. and also once a month, once a month at the end of the month, because it was boarding school, which is, I love so much. 
and I learned so much. The boarding school, you learn how to be a man, you make your own dishes, you make you you wash your own clothes and you also time and they say you gotta be in the bed at ten, you gotta be in the den. It's kind of time management was awesome. And um um at the end of the month the school will give us permission to go home. There's kids that live nearby that we go home. I didn't go. I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't have any money. You have to go Jumbola and then no way. And um, they, uh, Rene and John, they would uh, we go out and get, get shish kebab. When I have money, I will share with them. They have money. We put them, actually we, we put the money together so we can, and I will manage the money. They said I was good at managing. I will manage the money. And so we go get, you know, Fanta and then shish kebab, and then we come home. So that was, everybody goes, they are home, and we stay and watch cars, count cars, and that, that's it, it was fun, mm. it was fun. That was your holiday? That was, yeah. no, it was, it was a one, they gave us one day. Yeah. They, they said, okay, eight o'clock, boom, you're free. You have to come back six o'clock, so you have a whole day. So if you're not nearby, mm. yeah. so, I, that was, <laughs> and but they also announced they would say this week this week gonna give you a break so you cannot prepare um, but Rene and John we didn't go anywhere so I know school also gave you this experience gave you the experience to start competing formally in races and running yeah so yeah. Um, this let's say no, I don't think we have here the school was selecting um, a team to represent the school, and the way they select athletes, um, they hosted like five miles, and I won. I won the five miles, and when I won the five miles, remember when the teacher didn't want me to do it, she kind of was mean. She didn't believe in running, and she's like, you're not going anywhere until you finish this here. I beg her. Baked her. I ran barefoot. I won the race. When I won the race, this coach came up to me and gave me a confidence. He said, Son, you can be the best. Not only here. I want you to look forward. Not this country, but you can be the best. That really helped me. That inspired me. Mm -hmm. The coach to believe in me. You know, remember how in elementary school I fake running? Mm -hmm. That really, this one, this kind of like wake up call. You're good, son. I beat the guy who almost made the Olympic. And so um, I was selected. And then the following spring, we have track. I run 800. As a freshman, I was second. For the first time in history, the school was able to send one kid, a freshman, to state. That was huge. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, I won the state. The following year, I won the state until they get tired of me. Um, so it, it, the, the hard work, the, um, the dedication, the, the determination was caused by a coach who believed in me mm -hmm. and inspired me to do great things. And um, he's, he's older, but still has friend, I still a friend. I got more responsibility when I was ninth grade to be the leader. Mm -hmm. I lead the team to a championship. The school, and also with drum. I was on the drumming team, which is we perform when the president would come to the villages or uh, um, high dignity would come, we would play drums. And um, I got a chance to see really the country. Uh, that was uh, the best moment. Mm -hmm. And th these also gave you chances to be a leader or yes. to be a, practice leadership. I did. In fact, in fact, the track and field, and uh, I was the coach. I had built the team because we have only one coach, it was a PE coach. It would be they move from season to season, basketball to soccer, handball. We have all has handball. You do you know what the mm -hmm. Olympic handball is? Yeah. I've seen it before, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's another one you hit the wall, okay? Mm -hmm. No. Handball is like football. American football, we start without a helmet, mm -hmm. without contact, and it's fast. It's, it play in the field, um, like a tennis side field 
and man, it is so fast. It's like one, two, three. you can't hold the ball for three seconds. You can't run the ball like you do in football. Mm -hmm. it, that was, uh, it's eye coordination, it's um, good cardio, and coach was busy doing those, and I'll be coaching track. I built the team from scratch. By the time we go to championship, the four by four, I remember going to the headmaster, I need the shoes, four shoes. He's like, no, we have two. We bought two shoes. Can you imagine four by one, four by four, really, wearing two pair of shoes? So, I would start. The first and second, we wear shoes, right? I would start and give it the lead, and I would give the shoes to the third person. And the second person would give it to the fourth. We won. You got to get the job done. Here, man, we, when I see kids, uh, whines, and I, I don't get it. Yeah. Um. The competition, did it also give you a chance to travel even more in yes. the country? Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, I was able to go to places. I remember going to North, and I was the only student from high school. Um, you know, it's like you make a state, they go like a Baylor, pick someone at Baylor, pick someone at the NM, pick someone to be, because it's paid by state. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember staying, and I made friends. I was very big friends, especially people at my event. I, um, People doing this things, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know it's while you're at, you're in uh, the school in, in Kabimba that things start getting worse uh, as far as the tensions in your country. And so can you, you talked about early on not really experiencing the difference. When did you begin to experience a difference between, or tension, increased tension between the tribal groups? Um, I think that the not the trouble, the conflict was always there. I was just a different road. Uh -huh. I was just playing sports, enjoying it. Because when you play, so you don't pick and choose. You're good, come on. You're fast, come on. It doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm. That was me. Mm -hmm. But deep inside, there were tension built up. But I just ignored it. I didn't pay attention. Um, there was one time, I think before 93, we were sleeping, they're like, get up, get up. Some of the Tutsi come to wake me up. I'm like, what's up? The Hutu are about to kill all the Tutsis. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, get up. Do not sleep tonight. Stay alarm. Um, and of course, in the end of the, in the night, he, the headmaster heard it and he would kind of walk around to see if any trouble had happened. The headmaster, what he did, what the school, was the one that really held the school together. Mm -hmm. Really, that was any control. I mean, there was no way, be, no way to get out of any situation. He was in charge of the town and he had a student. I was one of them. By the way, ninth grade, I was given the privilege to serve in the library. You know how privileged it is to be a librarian? You know what that entails? I was guiding the books. I would know where the books are. Not, I mean, all the books. And then that John who and Rene, they, were, they trusted me, so I become librarian. And so what that means is I have a privilege to study in a library, not with the kids. Then we go and take attendance to make sure everybody's there, and I will go to the library have the key for the library, for teacher, uh, come to read a magazine, for me, a quiet place to study, get privilege to books, get privilege to magazines. Um, and he was an incredible. All these tension, I didn't get a chance to see. A groupie, I would group with the people who share the same passion, the sports, mm -hmm. the drumming. Um, so he was building up. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you notice it in your classes with your teachers? Because you had Hutu teachers and Tutsi teachers. I, I, I didn't know, but there was yeah. one teacher that... Uh, 93. Uh -huh. what, you're talking about 93? You're talking about whole... Tell me as this built up, as you begin to notice a change, and uh, if you noticed things getting worse between the different groups. The thing got it started getting worse in 92, 93. Uh, we were in a break, uh, on the summer break, 91. And when the village got attacked, was in north, and, and they heard the Tuts, the Hutu came to kill the Tuts, they killed a lot of people. But the army intervened, was able to finish that. And, it was, and then it started building attention. You hear rumors, they're here, they're coming here. 
Um, and so I started build up during the election 1993. Mm -hmm. That's really things got started getting out of hands, you know, um, because the slogan people were saying. There was a nasty slogan, uh, we who to, you know, we've been a slave for many years of time. And they would say, if we don't win, I mean, this guy on the TV, uh, Merkio and Dada, who was the first uh, elected president, democratic elected president, was the one that was like, you know, he came up with some signs that we saw in apartheid, apartheid in South Africa. Using the hands, we will win, we will win. I never seen, I, I never win this election. And so, and those are slogan, a kind of hate slogan. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, you know what? I have, to fo I have to focus on my study. We'll go through until um, one day we probably have, we have a few. You ready? I'm ready to tell you because this is very emotional. Because I remember vi living that moment. This is October 21st. October 21st, 1993. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to class, thinking it's gonna be a normal day. Um, my parents gave me a radio also to listen to, cup, to keep up to keep up the news. And every five o'clock, I would turn it on to kind of get updated. That day, they um, it didn't work. And I thought about it; it was off. And I changed the battery, it didn't work. It was just static noise, which is the radio is being disconnected. True. Well, usually when you hear those, it's a coup. Mm -hmm. And that was a coup. I knew the day was going to be longer because uh, I saw the, I saw the, um, um, the signs during the campaign, you know, we will win, we will win, we will win, we will, victory is coming. But at the same time, so I was like, it's not going to happen. This guy's not going to happen. I never heard of this guy. Mm -hmm. But he's been coming to Rwanda. <clears throat> he's been living in Rwanda. He's, that's where he's really learned all these nasty things. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that's not going to happen. That night also, I didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. It was Wednesday. I didn't sleep. I had so many tests. I had a physics, chemistry, biology to study for. I was ready. Because it's a selection. My class, you know, where I was, my, you, to go to university, again, it's, just, it's not like everybody you pass, you do the test, you 10% mm -mm. uh, go, maybe 20% go to next level. So you have to fight to be in that top 20%. So I focus on getting a good grades, and there was a guy who hit me. He was the headmaster, he was also my teacher for chemistry. I was good in the chemistry, but he proved me I was wrong. I mean, he would, it's an equation. They give us an equation to solve, and I would solve it, and then he would pick anything a little bit to just to make to fail me. And uh, because he, he said, you have, I mean, he, I remember he told me some nasty word that um, we're drinking his blood. I'm like, what, what do you mean? He was just very angry man. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he was given that job the headmaster, because they um, go back to the 1993, that, that, that October 21st, um, going to class, I didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to do the last reading because they didn't turn the lights in the dormitory. They were turning the school. Even in the school, school were locked up. But in the, in our class, because they know we have a lot of to do, they will leave the door open. And, and so, as I'm studying, as I'm going there, I mean, the radio didn't work. I'm worried about that, but I'm, I ignored it. I'm like... You're worried about your exam. Yeah. 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 And then, I walked to class. This guy who lived in, off campus, like a couple blocks, ran it to me. He's like, today. He didn't say even, he just said, today is this, you're going to cut your throats. I'm like, what the heck, why? Because they said, you know what, the president has been killed by the Tutsis. And there's a plan that we're going to kill the Tutsis. You know what, I'm like, oh my gosh. Really? And, and I ignore it. 
Uh, so they rang the bell to go eat the cafeteria at 7 o'clock, 7. I mean, uh, from my class to the cafeteria, we walk a distance and look at the highway, trees. These people, they took all the trees and um, the trees were laying so no car would go by. To block the roads. To block yeah. the roads. Yeah. And the people are walking and they are singing and there was another group coming to school. But they get stopped. Um, they were stopped because they told that to wait to go get the neighbor first before they can come to school. School will be last. And went to the cafeteria, man. I, I didn't eat. My stomach was sick. Then we went to the. Then we went to. Before class, you have to salute what they call salute the flag. It's like a best way to check if everybody's there. Uh, they have a place to gather everybody, so you, if you're late, you get, you get. Uh, so it's like out in the courtyard. Yes, yeah. in the courtyard central. Yeah. So they know nobody's in the classroom, nobody's in the dormitory, nobody's in the cafeteria. We have to be in one place. If you are somewhere else, you're in trouble. And so they now happen every day, 7:30. Everybody's supposed to be saluting. It's like an army. And the headmaster didn't show up. And rumors everywhere. They killed the president. We're gonna be killed. What we're we gonna do? Let's go to class. And somebody's the teacher didn't show up. And it was like eight o'clock in the morning. We were waiting. There's no teacher. We're wondering. You know, there's a rumor everywhere. The group here, group here. I'm like, I'm memorizing the formula. You know, uh, I'm, I can't wait. I hope he shows up because I'm ready. I hope he shows up. Then. The teacher is running. One of the teacher is running, being chased. They want to capture him. He refused. He ran away. And he's running towards the school. And um, his name is Davas. And I knew him. He was my technology teacher. And he said, they took all the professors away. Took to burn them. And they said, we are next. They're gonna take the teacher, they're gonna take a senior, I was a senior and then a junior and sophomore and so on. Then a group of us get together, got together. I have uh, a school representative, well respected, a senior, we have to step up and do something. Mm -hmm. And so uh, finally headmaster showed up. This is like around 10 o'clock, we're like, let's go ask what's going on. Because this mob, they want to come attack the school with a machete, with a big stick. They want to come out to school. Still, we don't have any idea. We heard the president of, um, they, somebody was able to capture the radio from Rwanda. He says what happened. Mm. Uh, not in Burundi, but the radio Rwanda was announcing that the president was killed, was killed by, uh, and it's a, there's a mass killing is going to happen. And it was a Hutu that went on the radio and said, revenge. Everywhere you see a Tutsi, a child, and um, a baby, a growing up, eliminate. That was the message, the hated message he was on Rwanda uh, radio. And so I heard those, but at the same time, I'm still waiting for that teacher. The teacher came to teach, man. They followed him, and they were chasing him, and he resisted to become together, we stayed together. And we said, let's go ask the headmaster, a school what is supposed to be protected, how in the world the headmaster is letting this to happen? Mm -hmm. We went and stood up in him and he said, you killed our president. He looked me in my eyes, man. He said, you are going to see what a Jesus saw on the cross. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. This is a guy, every Sunday he was in charge of the church and leading the church, leading the prayer. I'm like, no, you, no you're not. You, to me, no, you're not going to do that. Sure enough, the mob got really angry. After we, have, we heard what the headmaster said, it was time to organize um, the getaway. Yeah. But where do you go? I mean... And he had a radio, and he's, uh, he had this real radio. He was an awkward professor. I mean, this guy was awkward. He was a chemist. Really awkward. Um, and then, and so he, he was racing on the radio, and then we had to find a way to escape. And we started, we found it, 
lunch it was lunch we said look guys we're gonna eat this is the last supper let's eat we don't know what we're gonna eat and then we also organize a way to escape and the way to escape is like go find everything you have in no bag we're gonna leave everything behind we are going to use take our clothes trying to wear three clothes if you can you need shorts pants two pants because you never know shoes that we're not going to take anything that is going to prevent you from running do not take a bag so we leave everything now we're going to march in a peaceful walk to go to go to a camp it was it was 26 miles and this is an army camp yeah called Moaro. and and so on the way to Moaro, which was a camp the mob stopped us where are you going? But we were stupid. Instead of arming, getting armed, we took a javelin, we took, uh, uh, one of the students suggested we take javelin, took a stuff that we have for the school to protect ourselves. There was a storage for javelin and it's like, let's take those stuff, we're gonna protect ourselves. It's like, no, it's a peaceful walk, nothing, no stone in our hands, which was a bad mistake. And we started walking. So, Someone called the mob that we were leaving. They went ahead. They cut over. They cut. This is two miles we're going away from the school. Then they find a lot of, uh, what do you call, uh, people to come to reinforce the, the, the group. It was, the group grew from maybe to 100 to 300. So they like stop. We were like close to 600 kids. Um, and I am kind of in the back watching because I was like, you know what, I don't want to see this. I know these people. I've done so much. I ran for this school. I ran everything. I did everything for them. I don't want to see them. Um, sure enough, someone spotted me in a group. Get up at this in a group. Get up and, and stupid I am. Yeah, I thought they were going to save me, but they want to identify me. They, they had a goal that because I was the fastest kids in the village. They're like, if you don't get these kids, he's gonna run and get this police and the soldiers. We have to catch him first. Mm. I had a people um, guiding me, people watching, um, so I make sure that they make sure so that I don't escape. And all of a sudden, they said they draw a line on the sand. You pass this line, you go. Well. Some of the guys crossed the line. We, we we forced to go because the back was dangerous. The group is growing. They probably want to find a way to hold us the hostage so they can. And all of a sudden, this woman took a spear and threw in a group. He, he poked one of my classmates. He went straight and we pulled it out. And from that time, everything went from to chaos. I ran and I was chased by a thousand people. I mean. You move, we shoot. We arrows, don't move, we shoot, don't move. And I got terrified. So they took me to a hospital. They took me in front of the headmaster to judge. And the, the thing for the headmaster was to making sure that everybody they're taking, the whole idea was to burn, put everybody in the burning building. But before they go in the building, they want to make sure that everybody who goes there is a tutsi. No, uh, it was like a checkpoint. This is go, go. Before we go, we were roped together in a death march. The headmaster spotted him. I'm like, man, he's gonna help me. He looked me in my eyes. That's what he repeat again. You are going to see what Jesus on the stone cross. He's like, take him in that build, that room, isolated room. There's a room that was um, the dean of students. Like, lock him up, man. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you really, really, really um, scared. There's no hope. There's no way to get it. It's like they lock in the building. How do you go? I look how I can. There was no way to go. Outside, they are screaming. They are chopping the kids. They are hitting my shit in the neck. They are beating the kids. I'm terrified. And 
what saved me was when the professor started saying, no, we have to do the same thing for Gilbert. We have to burn like other kids. And he's like, no, I have a special torture for him. It's like, no, we're going to get Gilbert. So these pygmies, they knew who I was. They're like, no, we want to have him like other kids. We're going to burn him. Um, it's like, no, 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 I'm saving for myself. I'm going to crucify him. It's like, no. So they, they after the battle, and it's like, get out of here. Okay, so they rope. So I was, they, I was roped. Um, they took a rope here, mm -hmm. go behind my back, and then we'll be back here. And I was, I put him in the middle. It's like, make sure he doesn't get away. I was a guided man with a machete and the arrows with, as they took my clothes, they took, um, I have nice jeans, they took it out. Um, I have nice shoes, they took it out. Uh, I was in a shorts, tiny shorts, it looked like an underwear. Uh, and in that, in that shorts, I had $1,000, but only friends money. That's my parents sent me to go home. I was like, you know what, if something happened, I would go get this, um, this money we we'll buy Fanta or we'll pass. I gets me somewhere. And then we were pushed, started pouring rain, took the shoes. We were most of the people were naked. Um, and as we go into the Holocaust, the place they're gonna burn alive, everyone. I mean, everybody was like humiliated. You go through stage, go, go. People will be like, I know him, I know him, but they they, they can't help. They speak up. I'm guided in among 22 people. We get there, we get in, uh, in front of the building. They want to make sure that everybody who entered the building get hit in the neck. With, uh, I mean, they bought the strongest guys in the village to make sure that they don't miss hit here. Um, they had a, had a code, and it was inimbo nugutwi, which is uh, paralyzed. It's the best way to say paralyzed. So by the time you get in a fire, you won't breathe. You won't be able to do anything. And as we're getting there, everybody was shot. I, they, uh, there was a rope coming here. You know, those drumming, I do a lot of pull up and push ups. My upper body was ripped strong. So when they put a rope here, I went like this, it was loose. But I was scared to get out because they were going to kill me with my shit. They are going to kill me bad. So I didn't want to do that. And I had a voice. The voice was strong. Tell me I'll be okay. I didn't know what it was. So inside, b before you entered the building, you had a choice. They would ask you if you really want to burn, be burned alive, or they kill you in front. So one of the kids, his dad was general in the army. He said, no, I don't want to go in fire. So they chop him in pieces. My eyes, for the first time in my story, for me to be able to see that was an incredible. I mean, it's just, I jumped in the building. And when I jumped, they tried to bring me back because that rope was loose. Mm -hmm. So, but instead of hitting me here, because the guy went in front and uh, it was, I don't know, a miracle happened, hit me here. And, um, I kind of blotted for a couple of weeks, but I was okay. And then once we get in the fire, man, the, the headmaster was a chemistry, so brought some chemical. They would spray some chemical in the fire. I mean, it opened the building, and then they would use a gasoline, so they spray gasoline using the eucalyptus branches, mm -hmm. and then light the building. I witnessed my friends dying, and I was waiting for my turn, and. Um, after eight hours of fighting, and there was, so as you can see, you know, um, this is uh, this is like 12, 22 years ago. Think about it. And also, as you can see, my back. Okay. So like my back right here, all the way. Yeah. So my leg, right? My leg. So the fire was coming from the roof. So what I would do, I would cover like this, cover have some people, because I was strong and pretty much they were half dead or dead. And so I had to fight for my life. They were outside, mm -hmm. chanting, celebrating. I had to get out. And um, there was no way I'd be able to get out. At 3 a.m., 
they want to come in and finish it you the take spear just poking on everybody to making sure nobody's still alive but i was in the corner hiding i yanked the spear from the guy and it's like someone stood up someone is there is the gilbert who went in and there was another soldier is either the soldier or the gilbert who went in with no because they didn't beat me here mm -hmm. And so they're like, we have to go in and finish him. First, they would do, they would throw some spear, I mean, a uh, um, stone to kind of give him a, give a chance someone to enter. But I was in a corner, you know, uh, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying. But I have to defend myself right now. There's no help. This is in the middle of the midst of the night. Determined to escape. Finally, the, the hell the soldier was happening, they started leaving and they said, I started leaving. Only the diehard people stayed. I had a voice. The voice was really strong. Tell me that I'll be okay. I didn't know what the voice was talking to me, but it was confidence. It was like, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. But as a teenager, I started accusing myself, man, everybody will go to church, I'll go play. Everybody will go here, I will go run. Man, I'm getting punished. How in the world I'm on this fight? I was the fastest kids, but this little person is not here. Why? Why? I mean, I couldn't find a solution. And finally, I said a prayer. I said, God, please forgive me. Man, I came up to idea that after I said that prayer, I came up to idea, some ideas started coming up that I got to get out because they intensified the fire. Now, they go on the roof, they spray the gasoline, and then you have a chemical. The chemical was to see if everybody's still awake. You know, was still awake. People would go, uh, um, um, the sign that breathing, still, the smoke was too bad, the chemical was too bad. Um, and for me, I would go, mm. I would breathe using your mouth, my mouth and the nose, and because uh, of the endurance, I could hold longer. Mm. And, and finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna die outside. If they kill me, if they chop my head, fine. At least my parents, when they come to get to see a piece of me, they'll be able to see a piece of Gilbert. So I have to get out. I took a, a dead body, broke the window. The window was made of like bars, like one, two in the middle. So I stick my head out. Usually when your head can get out, your body can fit. Mm -hmm. I, I learned that a long time ago. So my head went through, I'm like, man, I can do this. But it was one, if I break the one in the middle, it's even more room. So I broke the one in the middle, used the dead body. No, I, I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I broke the, the, the window, I look outside, they're waiting. I'm like, and I threw the person that I used to break, I threw outside, was half dead. Maybe it was like conscious. Woke up! She, and then as soon as she woke up, they threw a spear here that threw all the way up here. That scared me. And it really scared me because if I go out, they're going to kill me bad. But you know what? I said a prayer. Praise God. Help me. I grabbed the top leg first. I was like, if they cut my leg, I'll be able to see and testify. And this is really a miracle. I land in the midst of them. When I land in the midst of them, they didn't see me. You know, I've been like in hell. Now I'm in heaven. Because breathing nice air, it took maybe 10 seconds to realize that I'm in heaven. Man. I'm like, weaving, they're going to cut my head. But I'm not, I'm not living for anything, nobody. Finally, I saw a path, there was nobody. That place has been guiding, nobody. They probably left, it was three o'clock in the morning. I sprint. As I'm going, the fire in my back, because they were throwing the gasoline on us. Like, here, 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 but I didn't go far. It was at the top of the mountain, so it's a kind of a dip. Mm -hmm. And these people, when, when people hear genocide, they think something happened overnight. 
you know, when you look at the the ten stage of a genocide, those things were planted, those things happened before that day. I was just ignorant, didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. But it was forming. And so they had to dig up a lot of holes to bury people. Because of it rain that day, it was full of water. I landed in that hole. Man, I remember this leg getting in the water. I mean, that's what I noticed. It was a huge hole, and I look here, it was a huge hole. And I was so angry. But that was, the, that was really when I'm studying the journey of survival. Because now these people are going to chase me. There were a group, there were a group of people, they were, um, they were hesitating. He went this way. Let him. We're going to find him tomorrow morning. He's almost dead. He's on fire. He's going to, the fire, he's going to burn until he died. Let's wait. I heard him. I'm in a dangerous area. So think about him. The safer area is this way. I am in a dangerous area. I have to get out. Oh, I remember um, putting one leg in front of him. This is a new body, by the way. Mm. I remember trying to walk in the midst of the um, coffee, uh, coffee plantation, trying to put one leg in front of the other. It was incredible, incredible painful. Mm. Taking one leg in front of the other. Then um, I was able to uh, make it. But before I made it, I landed, I, went, I ended up in a, uh, as I you walking through the forest, the, and every tree is will move up. Stop! It's not person, and and because it's dark. Yeah. And then I end up in a group of Hutu. One of them was the guy who was in charge of making sure that everybody was on fire, that everybody was burning. But he went home. He went home. He went home right as I was escaping. But it took that time to get to his house. He had moved his family from the house in outside in forest because they heard the soldier was happening and they were they were feared that the soldiers would come and revenge. So they got out of the house. Boom! Landing them. They're like, oh no, here's Gilbert. I uh, I said, I'm gonna die. What am I gonna do here? Run, I can't run. What I'm gonna do here? This woman, she came up to me and she said, "Do you need a water?" Mm. I said, "No, I didn't trust anyone because my grandma taught me that if if it's a poison you put on the ground, it will burn. So whoever's gonna give you poison, you drink, pour on the ground first. It burns. That's poison. Mm. So the woman gave me the water. I pour on the ground." Didn't burn. And he's like, I'm gonna give you a jacket. I'm like, jacket, where? Get a jacket, kids, you cold. Because everything started tensing up. Mm -hmm. um, this is like around five o'clock. And the man showed up. He's like, yeah, here's Gilbert. He ran away. I'm like, no, 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 you're lying. I didn't run away. They let me, because there was no way I would ex I'd say that I, I ran away. But, because when in the midst of chaos, you know, you don't know what's going on. I said, hey, do you know they let me go? There was a confusion. They let me go. There was no way you'd be able to explain because everybody, I mean, dead. There was a confusion. And I was like, how so? I am not a Tutsi. I am a mix. In fact, I'm a Hutu. So they let me go because my dad is a Hutu and my mom is a Tutsi. Then they started doing what the Nazi did. They started doing something I never heard, I never seen, I learned in the school, but I didn't even pay attention because we didn't have the measurement. They, they measure my nose. Mm -hmm. They measure my forehead. Okay? They even measure my ankle. And they said, show me your hands. I showed them my hands. They come, did this, and they measured this. He's a, he's a Tootsie. Let's kill him. He's a Tutsi. No, I'm like, listen, guys, there is a mistake here. I am, I am a Hutu. My mom is a Tutsi. My dad is a Hutu. It doesn't make it a, a Hutu. And they're like, some like, it's true. And some are like, no. I saw him. He escaped. 
let's kill him. I'm going to bring trees to crucify him. And they like, before you crucify him, let's ask a few questions. Where are you from? Where I from? It's the, the previous president were coming from my area. If I stay where I come from, my province was, a, I mean, it was among the thing not to mention was to say my province. Mm -hmm. That was one, the province, no. Mm -hmm. I was worried the guy knew who I was, because I was the school from seventh grade to 13th grade. Mm -hmm. That means a lot of time and running, they knew. There's no way I would fake it. So I said, I am coming from, I said, uh, uh, Rumonge. Rumonge, it was a place where they kill a lot of Tutsi. There's no Tutsi left. Mm. But it's still in that same province. Because I'm like, if they know I'm from that province, at least I got there. It's a one of those days, um, you know, God was with me. Mm. I said, I'm from Rumonge. He said, yeah, guys, Rumonge, there's no Tutsi. The guy came back strong again and said, no. I saw him running away. Let's crucify. Don't not waste time. Let's crucify him. Men's went to get the trees to crucify me. But the women stayed with me. One woman said, go kid. There's a way they say kid, kibon, which is uh, kid. Get out of here. I'm like, where? Kid, get out of here. Go here. I think I heard that you can go to the hospital. She gave me an idea to go to the hospital. I was gonna go again in the woods to end up, because I had the soldiers um, that went to the hospital. When, before I get to the hospital, there was a group waiting to attack people. And I didn't have a clothes back then, and I was running like funny, I mean, uh, tippy toes, and I couldn't put my whole weight in my leg. End up in the mat uh, maternity room. I'm like, you know what, if these people are horrible, at least they would respect the hospital in the maternity room. Sure enough, there was a guy that saw me and he followed me, but I was fast. He was sniffing around the door. The guy was here, the guy was here. I don't know if he was scared. I was in here, locking the door, holding the door, waiting if he's, if he's gonna call me by himself, I'm gonna fight him off. He was the only guy that chased me, I saw it. And, um, I'm breathing heavy, my heart is like, ooh, ooh. I don't know if you have a, in a, in a dark room, it's quiet, I'm nervous. My heart was louder than the car that passing on the freeway. Mm -hmm. Stop. And finally the guy, oh, that was not a guy. I heard him saying to his friend, say, hey, that might be a devil, because he didn't have a clothes, was running funny, he can be a human being, let's get out here. So that saved me. It took me, it took like a, another maybe 30, 40 minutes, and I heard a gun. The soldiers, they came, they heard what happened. I mean, they're shocked. Like, how can you do this? They were killing everything they found on the road. And, and so, and then they heard that um, beautiful girls, um, teacher, mostly women, and some, there was some survivor at the hospital. They came into the hospital. I mean, I refused to open the door. Mm. And I heard outside, like, let's go. They're taking everybody out of the hospital. They're gonna, uh, before they can fight them, they wanna take them to, uh, to the army. They had a, they bought a big, uh, whatever, that big army car to take everybody. And then he's like, hey, has anybody seen Gilbert? Are we, and then people are like, we heard Gilbert was the first one to be executed. We heard that was the first person to be killed. Of course they didn't know. I was hiding. And I looked through the window. He's a, yeah, my, my classmate. Mm. You remember the story I told you, the guy that we damaged the land of mm -hmm. uh, the land uh, for uh, corn sweet? Mm -hmm. That was the son of that man. Mm. He was the name is um, Manirakiza, which is God healing. And I recognized him. I jumped. I opened the window because I didn't know they, I, uh, didn't know if they were gonna fire the gun, but I opened it slowly. I said. 
Mani Rakis, I'm here. He came and hugged me. I'm like, there's no place to hug. Mm. He threw the gun down, weeping, crying. Mm. And then he's like, let's go. I mean, washing his, let's go. Like, where are you taking me? And then they got an order on the radio says, guys, keep the kids here. We're going to come later. There's an issue we have to solve here. We have to go fight these people. They're coming to kill the people every hospital. Let's chase them. And then, but they st we stayed with a few armies. Um, and then there was a room full of uh, student girls. What they have done, they would, they would break their ankles or they, so they won't be able to walk. And they, would, they had a plan to come the next day. They would select the beautiful girls. And then they would... Uh, they would come the next day to, uh, to whatever they were not planning to do. Um, all they chopped in the face, it's like, you are stupid toots, we're gonna, we never get married, you, you so cocky. I mean, they would chop the faces and, I mean, stupid stuff. And um, I was so thirsty. Mm. I probably drank maybe two to three gallons at once. I lost so much water, and I didn't know if I'm gonna get any food. This has been like 20, almost 24 hours no food. Um, I'm dehydrated, and I drank the water, and then uh, uh, we were taken to the hospital, a hospital, the army hospital, where, um, you know, the news all over was all the kids in the Kibimba. If you have a kids in the Kibimba, they're all dead. My parents didn't even try, they, because they know uh, there's a war everywhere. Um, they started doing the funeral ceremony until one week later, Lucy, the Lucy, mm -hmm. the Lucy who we went to ask, mm -hmm. he was, uh, he's the one who was able to tell my family that I'm alive. And uh, in fact, she took care of me at the hospital. She took care of me. Um, she fed me and she was able to report to my parents' house doing it with one. Co uh, co telephone was not uh, advanced like these days. But you, she was able to get a hold of the phone and call my brother. Uh, my brother back then, he was already in the army, uh, come got me and transferred me to hospital nearby where I was grow up. And my grandma came to see me. You know, uh, it was incredible. And she's like, you know, uh, I'm glad you're alive. They never seen anybody that's burned. Um, but it was a rejoiceful, it was a rejoice moment. Um, to be able to see my parents again because they didn't know what to expect. And really, when I was in the hospital trying to reflect what happened, that what could been, um, how could been that prevented, um, there was a tension that built up, I didn't know because I was focused on the sports. But also God has planned, planned for me to tell, to testify, to tell the story, to to the new generation. Number one, never give up. And second, because um, I didn't want to give up my fight. And the thing also that I was in the, in the fire, I learned that um, the, the things that it's very important is going in our society is to be able to move on. I want to find a way, I want to find a way to live a healthy life and and happy life. One was to forgive the enemy that causes such pain to move on. Because if I think about these people that are trying to kill me, it will hold me hostage. Uh, and, and so I chose to forgive so I can move on. It was not easy because these people were killing, were still killing. Uh, they would go to church and pretend they're Christian. They would, keep, they would go to church. If you're a Christian, why do you go to church in machete? And they had a machete when the church is over, they go kill people. What kind of person, what kind of Christian is that? I learned that, you know what, I don't have to worry what the people are doing. I have to worry about me and my well-being. And to me, to clear my mind, to clear my head is to find a joy and running, start running. Um, you know, um, the doctor had said that I would never run again um, until one day I was able to jog. And when I jog, I was able to... Um, uh, so this was, um, this was, uh, it was not this big because I couldn't stretch my leg. Mm -hmm. um, there was this hole, I mean, it's still like, it looks like. The scar tissue. Yeah, and, and this leg has been giving me trouble for over the years. Anyway, I chose to forgive, to live a happy life uh, so I can tell this story mm -hmm. um, because 
really when you look at you look about things happening and the bullying and the genocide happening every day and somewhere around the world Burundi is in trouble right now um, and you look what happened what can I do at my end to control I was able to start a foundation and the foundation is to give back the people that are trying to kill me uh, to bring peace these people if you look how these people trying to kill me there was there part inside of them besides the leader the politician the normal people didn't have any business killing me or killing my relatives or my friends it was, they're easy to manipulate because most of them haven't been to school most of them they are poor they're poor a little thing will trigger um, um, some of this killing so one of the thing was to bring joy and to bring a peace to people uh, water water which is number one number one problem in like Africa so right now uh, I'm able to give it to 50,000 um, out of getting a clean water to home I'm still building I'm still we still the foundation is changing a life and because of I didn't give up because um, I didn't lose hope um, and because also I changed I changed to to educate a new generation I changed because I have to change myself 2011 I went back to see the place that I escaped it was an incredible journey I learned so much how things happen event by event because I didn't know and I met the man who came to rescue us the, 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 um, the reason the reason it took us so long the shorter from 26 miles to get to us it was they these people they planned this genocide it was it didn't happen overnight they dig up a lot of hole and then they they were they were going to the midst of the street all right then they would dig a hole and they they leave uh, uh, dirt you think it is a street but it was a hole and cars would go <laughs> so it would take her forever and a lot of people died a lot of accident so they decided to walk that's why it took so long because they were running through barricades I learned the soldier that the guy who was in charge of the commander mm -hmm. I was able to meet him that was a conclusion to be able to conclude and I was able to go to the place um, uh, that I almost lost my life it was, it was incredible people said don't go because if you go it might trigger you probably know mm -hmm. if you go it might trigger those but I needed it to a conclusion mm -hmm. and so um, it's been a great journey to be able to tell this story uh, to educate a new generation yes genocide happened uh, what can you do to your end what can you do to prevent that happening um, because um, it still happened and I'm so proud to be part of this uh, Texas Holocaust and the Genocide Commission because one our mission is to educate to tell the new generation to prevent so it won't happen again mm -hmm. now you talked about at one point that while all this was going on you were watching to wanting to remember what had happened so you can you mean tell, in the fire? tell the story in the fire mm -hmm. It, so you could tell the story, so you could tell the family, so you could tell uh, others mm -hmm. about what happened. Yeah. And uh, I know this is giving you that opportunity. Also, your book gave you that opportunity, and you still find opportunities to tell others. Yes. What happened? Yeah. Yes. I, back then in the fire, I don't think I I knew I'll come I'll come through. I didn't know. But it was, it came to a conclusion the last minute, like after eight hours of burning, something, something weird happened. I think it was a voice. And the voice was telling me that I'll be okay. But I didn't know where the voice came from. I, by the way, I tried to kill myself, by the way. I won't kill myself in a fire. I land, I, you know, I land and went up. It was concrete, land ahead. First, it all passed out, it didn't happen. Then that's where the voice was really strong. Nothing will happen, son. You will survive. But I didn't know what the voice was talking to me. Later on, I learned with that voice. That's the voice that is with me today. That's telling me to go out and change the world. Tell the story so it doesn't happen again. And also go change the world. You will have to change. Because I change. You cannot live a life full of joy. 
if your heart is full of hate and anger, you gotta change. So, yeah. Well, Gilbert, I wanna thank you for taking time today to meet with us. No problem. Um, Nate, I don't know if you have questions. You I have ask. one. Uh, mm -hmm. I know music and drumming is so important to you, and it's <laughs> such a big part of, uh, of growing up and the songs your grandmother sang, and even now with running, you do chants. I was wondering if you might uh, bless us with a song or a chant, uh, just very quickly, so that the people who watch this can really get a sense of your music, because it's very powerful, uh, and it seems like it's such a big part of you. Uh, that I think it would be incomplete without some sort of song. You know, um, I was given a, a, a gift to coach people. Uh, this world is a full of struggle. A lot of people struggling with uh, you know, mental health and uh, confidence. Uh, I go out and motivate people. When people hear about my story, uh, yes, I went through hell, but I was able to overcome and do great things. And I coach high school, I coach kids. I coach one of the premier high school here in, St. Uh, in Austin, St. Andrews. And um, when you ask a song, sometimes I do song to distract people. So you think this is not the end of the words. Free your mind, sing. Maybe those words don't mean anything, but it's freeing your mind. Because we, um, we, uh, we overthink about a lot of the things, you know. Um, so some of the songs I like to do, it's, they, it's all different. One is uh, the song about my grandma, it's, it means a lot to me. We live in a world where it's always, what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next? We don't slow down. Do we ever take time to slow down? Do you ever take a time to listen to your family? Do you ever take time to listen to your kids? And so, the song about my grandma, it reminds me how my our grandma, again, she was not educated, but going to church every day, she wanted to share it with the song to ground us, to unite us. She had a meaning, because we not privileged to have electricity in the house, she would be cooking. It takes time. How do you kids, your grandkids, kids, to sing and to enjoy, wait for the bean you're cooking, wait for the potato you're cooking. You gotta distract the kids. It was very smart in a way, not like, don't sleep, don't sleep, because they're gonna do it. But she was very smart. Dachavo ni bim babas, maze ye sarankizam. Ashan shira ku bitugu, anjani we mi juru. Zori dim bigitangaza, yesuma miyakoze. So if you would think, this is one of the songs that I would like to sing before I die, it's Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace It's one of the songs that I would like to sing, you know, before I die. Um, yeah. Uh, when I teach people for running, I believe when you go out running, something hurts, your muscle hurts. We use a chant that I used in the high school when I was coming from elementary school. When I was coming from school, I was exhausted, I was tired. My mother would say, son, do not ask help a stranger. You gotta run when you see the rain. And so the rain, uh, to run to beat the rain, um, there's a song because I was going through forests and was thinking about a chant about lion. Um, you know, all the animals chasing you. So you, the animal is a dangerous animal. So you would think uh, when you're running for your life, the lion won't catch you. So there's a chant we used to do as a group. Uh, it, it goes like this. Young way till you're sick. Young way till you're fat. So I keep saying the words and then they say, everybody said, young way. Can you do that? Said, young way. But young I, way. no, no, it, you have to do it in the rhythm. Right. Young way till you're sick. Young way till you're fat. Young way. You keep saying young way. Okay. <laughs> One, two. Young, young way, way till you're sick. Young way. Yeah, in bed. Young way. Yeah, him. Young way. Till you sick. Young way. Sahimber. 
to your fat, to your sig. And then you keep adding some good words. Before you know it, you cover distance and we attack one another. There's, a, there's so many that I haven't heard. I sing it to my student. There's another one called Last Forever. He will say, No more ma, no more we have it, we have it, we have it. No more ma, no more ma, no more ma, no more we have it, we have it, we have it. We have it, good just for long more. No more ma, ina, ma, ina, no more ma, ina, ma, sing it, your head up. No more ma, no more ma. Before you know it, you cover distance. It's amazing. I, uh, it's a part of me because uh, everything was fun and that's probably I still enjoy what I do. And I teach, when I go with friends to go around and sing, they like, I can't sing around. No, yeah, you can't sing around. Mm -hmm. Just free your mind. Think about singing. Mm -hmm. I do marathons and people ask me, why in the world, what are you thinking when you're running a marathon? First, marathon is 42 kilometers, 26 miles. You have to think one at a time. Towards the end, your brain gives up, your body gives up. How do you come alive? I sing. Man, I turned my 22, I started singing. Thank you, God. Thank you for allowing me to be alive, to be able to do what I do. I almost died. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you. Thank you. And I keep singing and I uh, mix it up with Nungarama, mix it up with Yongwe, mix it up with singing. Before I know it, I'm like, cross the finish line. And there's people like, how do you find a joy when you run a marathon? Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Um, the more you think about the marathon, you focus on the negative, it gets in your head, your body's hurting, it's like, I can't do this. It doesn't happen to me. I'm the strongest the last marathon, mm. the last part of the marathon, because I dedicate the last piece as thankful moment. I'm mm. thankful because I can run. There's someone out there who wants to run, but they can't do it. Either, either they handicap or just they don't have the capability of doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, thank you again. I'm gonna yeah. teach. Uh, I'm gonna teach another one a song. Uh, right. So you provoke me. <laughs> <laughs> there is a there is a one called Run Fast. It's called Tigita. Tigita. T i g i t a. Tigita. It goes like this. Tigita. Tigita. Tigita, that tigita, you tigita, he tigita, we tigita, they tigita, we all tigita, tigita, tigita. It means run, 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 run. I, uh, yeah, I could be a magician, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you again for what you do. Um, that's the reason I volunteer to do this, because um, number one, I know how important it is. Uh, people are cautious. People are. I don't want to give my story because I want people to hand me back. My story, as you can see, it's a mixture of... You can summarize my life in three segments. Life at the beginning was awesome, fun. Guiding cows, getting water for my family, running to school, barefoot, having fun with my friends. Mm -hmm. Then there was a time I really, really suffered and ran for my life. I was put in a bear burning beer doing put in the fire, I overcome, I survived. The reason I did I survive is because it was not because I was strong or fast. God has plan mm -hmm. for me to, to one day to tell this story. And because of that, I didn't give up. Now I run with joy. And to be able to find the joy is because I able to let it go. Mm -hmm. That's a history, that's a past. The story needs to be told, but doesn't hold me back. Mm. Okay. I was able to move on my own life, my next journey, help people, prevent. And, and so privilege is a privilege for me to be part of the commission, mm. to serve on a commission, to serve on a state level so we can tell the story. And what is the best way for me being um, on a commission to be able to tell the story? I think. That's where you had to start. So.